Washington Grown is brought to you by Treetop and the Washington Hospitality Association. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gordon, and welcome to Washington Grown. Technology in our world is always changing, from the tools in our kitchen to the machinery in our fields. In this episode, we're talking all about innovation in one of our state's top crops, the potato industry. We'll head east to Spokane to the historical Spokane Club to make a few fry-based dishes. Mmm. Holy cow, that gravy is amazing. Then we're going down to the Tri-Cities to Lamb Weston's new Potato Innovation Center where they come up with new frozen potato varieties. I'm starting to think already. I'm going to come up with something. And we're in Seattle making potato latkes and seeing what people think of them. There's no words. It's fabulous. You have to try the sandwich. All that and more today on Washington Grown. really is a family affair. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, oh my look gosh. at that. Yeah. First up today, we're off to Spokane's historic and prestigious Spokane Club. The Spokane Club was built at the end of the 1800s when a group of business and civic leaders in town came together to form a social organization, and it's lasted more than 125 years. Flash forward to today, and the club is still going strong with a large following that's there for the social activities, the fitness center, and of course, the amazing food. I eat here quite often at the Spokane Club, probably three or four times a week. It's one of our favorite places. It's just casual. It's like the old Cheers Tavern for us. It's just where we can call home. They make uh, a club chip here that is really spectacular. It's a homemade potato chip. They're extra thick and crispy. They are really good. We should order yeah. some. It's definitely my place to come just to hang out and enjoy good food. I love the club. Executive chef Aaron Crumbaugh recently started at the Spokane Club, but he isn't new to cooking. You've been on TV before. Yes, so the first time was it was actually non-cooking related. It was The Amazing Race. How so far did you get? We finished fourth. And then I've been on Cutthroat Kitchen, so Alton Brown. And then this year I was on uh, Food Network Star. That's uh, cool. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you really enjoy coming up with new ideas and that sort of thing. That's part of being a chef is the creative outlet. You know, it's like, give me a pen and a piece of paper and I could not draw you a thing. But <laughs> yeah. give me different vegetables and sauces and meats and whatever else, and I'll paint you a beautiful picture on a plate. I have no artistic ability whatsoever when it comes to brush and pen, but food, food, food is I'm pretty thing. good. Coming up, we're in the kitchen with Chef Baron to cook up a couple of fry-based dishes, poutine and pulled pork loaded fries. Yeah, I'm gonna continue poutine. eating. He's gonna do all the work. <laughs> Love it, it's like my wife. <laughs> Now I'm over in Connell at Shirky Farms to learn how technology is impacting their day-to-day -day activities. Changes in technology have made a large impact on the way farmers are able to farm and grow food. I'm meeting with third-generation farmer Ted Shirky to learn about some of the new technology he uses to successfully grow his potatoes year after year. What are the challenges of being a potato farmer? Challenges of just uh, evolving with the technology and, and keeping a, ahead of the game, trying to utilize all the tools that'll help you produce a good crop and a quality crop. Ted explained that on all of their fields, they have a person who comes twice a week with a moisture measurement device and checks the amount of moisture in the soil. With this technology, they can conserve their water more effectively by only watering when needed. And we also have a guy that comes out and scouts the field for pests and light and also takes soil samples and uh, petiole samples. Also they email that to me and then I can adjust my fertil fertilizer accordingly. The information that we can get is actually fairly quick so that makes it easier to make a decision with the more informed you are. Since this is a family-run farm, Ted's older son Tyler is going to show me the GPS technology used in their tractors. This is cozy. Isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is all GPS. So before GPS, what did you have to do? 
uh, before GPS, um, what they had to do is pick a spot off in the distance like where we can see a tree or a house or something. And when they start going, they pick that spot and try to go straight. And doing that, all the while you have all your machinery in the background, um, you have to check if it breaks. So you're constantly kind of looking back and forth and back and forth. Right. So it could be pretty difficult to drive straight, sure. you know. So now you just have to look back. Right. So can I go for a ride? Of course. Okay. Tyler sets the GPS to go over a potato field that has already been harvested and prepare for the next crop. Tyler said that once the GPS is on, all he needs to control is the speed of the tractor and the levels of the disc in the back. If I go to a different page, it will tell me the RPMs, miles per hour, acres an hour, what I do. After my ride, I got a chance to talk to Tyler's brother. This is Ted's youngest son, Dylan, and you're a senior in high school? Yep. Yeah, so summertime, you're working? Yep. Here in the much. fields? What do you do? Well, I, I, um, I record the chemigation records in, like, in every field, so my brother can put them into our electronic record keeping. You're almost <clears throat> off to college here in another year or so. What, what was it like when you were a kid? When I was a kid, it's just a lot of pulling weeds and... <laughs> yeah. What's the worst job your dad has made you do? Probably pull a lot of weeds, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, my plans after high school is to go to WSU and get a degree in agricultural business or crop science, something like that. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Now Tomas is at a popular food truck in Seattle to see how they use potatoes to make unique but tasty sandwiches. Hey everyone, I'm here with Johnny Silverberg, owner of the Napkin Friends food truck. Now, you have a very interesting take on sandwiches, don't you? I do. What is that? Well, we, instead of bread, we use potato latkes. It's Good. like a traditional Jewish thing served on Hanukkah. So remove the bread, two crispy potato pancakes, oh. pressed on a flat-sided panini machine. It comes out super crispy and gooey and messy. It's amazing. The orders are rolling in, so we wanted to see what people in Seattle think of the latke sandwiches. So we're standing here in front of Napkin Fred's that you have been here several times oh, before. Yeah, absolutely. And this is gonna be your first time, right? This is pretty much the only food truck I visit. <laughs> um, this sandwich is so good. I've been thinking about it since last night. Look out, Seattle. The latka sandwiches are ready. So this is the first time. Let's make it happen. Stop tasting it. The smell is amazing. <laughs> Mmm, mmm, that's all you need. As soon as you get that, you know. No words, no words are needed. It's really good, like everything goes together really well. I don't know, there's no words. It's fabulous. You have to try the sandwich. Look who showed up. Mmm, tell me oh my one. God. Those latkes are amazing. I'm a latke lover now. Latke lover, I'll join you. <laughs> Coming up, we're back at the classy and historical Spokane Club with executive chef Aaron Crumbaugh to cook up some fry dishes, poutine, and loaded fries with pulled pork. I like a nice crispy fry. Mm -hmm. I hate it when I go to a restaurant and you get the fry and it's and like, it's like you're like, come on. <laughs> yeah. And we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest using potatoes to cook up hash brown waffles. Technology is always advancing in farming, so I'm in Pasco to learn how infrared technology is being utilized with farms. I'm here with Mike Stevenson with uh, Professional Ag Services. Tell me what Professional Ag Services does first. Well, we've been around since 1987, and the two main services we provide are infrared aerial photography okay. and also moisture monitoring and irrigation scheduling using a neutron probe. What are the benefits of the infrared aerial photos? They're we can see irrigation patterns. Mm -hmm. Is the irrigation system applying water uniformly? We can see variations in soil type and variations in just the overall condition of the plant. Mike showed me some examples of infrared pictures and explained that the color red means the plant and soil are in good shape. I mean, I'm no expert, but it looks like there's some issues. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah, if you look at the circular pattern, uh -huh that is related to the irrigation system. And the darker the red, the more vegetation. Yeah. In this case, they're getting more water 
in areas of the field. So a lot it, of information that you can learn from these. Yes, it gives them a good road map to go out and investigate what's happening in the field. I wanted to learn how this technology is helping farmers directly, so I met with potato grower Rob Davis and asked him what he does with the information he gets from Mike. By using some of these technologies, um, we, can, we can use less water and in the end, the consumer gets a higher quality product and we've had a smaller impact on our time here. You know, at the, at the end of our span, we would like to leave this place better for the next generation. So, so by using great potatoes. That's right. <laughs> I asked Rob how long it takes to get his weekly results. The instant that the pictures are taken and the plane lands and it gets uploaded um, onto the website, mm -hmm. then it sends my phone a text message. I know that the pictures are on the website, and not only me, but the rest of the potato managers can log in, they can look at their individual fields, they can see the progression from what did last week look like to what does this week look like. We can kind of try to also look at, at the correlation between where is the water chart at, what does the picture look like, what's the nutrients in the soil look like, and start to put all of those pieces of the puzzle together so that we can grow the best possible, highest yielding quality crop that we, that we can with the fewest inputs. We're back in Spokane at the Spokane Club. It's a historic spot in town with food that members and non-members alike brag about. The club over the years has done a great job of just presenting some very good local Northwest cuisine that I've enjoyed. Uh, a buddy of mine and I have been coming down here every Saturday for breakfast. You know, I think we're in our 47th year. I am not a member, but I always enjoy when I do come here. Chef Aaron Crumbaugh is new to the Spokane Club, but he isn't new to the culinary world. You've been on TV before. Yes, so the first time was was actually non-cooking related. It was The Amazing Race. How so far did you get? We finished fourth. And then I've been on Cutthroat Kitchen, so Alton Brown. And then this year I was on uh, Food Network Stars. That's uh, cool. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to cook with you. What are we going to make? So we are going to make poutine. It's a Canadian dish. And then nice. we're going to do a loaded fry. You had me at fries. I know, right? <laughs> so the first step with poutine is we, we have to fry our fries, our, fry our, our, fries. Our, wa our Washington potatoes. Yeah. Nothing but the best, right? Um, so, so we're going to go do that. Let's go fry the okay. potatoes. So we'll pull our fries out, you know, frozen fries in the bag. There we go, right here. You know, so the beautiful thing about uh, the frozen French fry is one consistency, you're always getting a great product. Okay. Uh, two is the cost savings. Yeah. And obviously, not a lot of people have a fryer at home. Right. So, so you know, you, you crank the oven up and yeah. put a little bit of a spray oil down on your pan and your uh, cheat tray, throw the fries on and throw them in the oven, you get a nice crispy That's fry even I that way. It, yeah. So I like a nice crispy fry. Mm -hmm. I hate it when I go to a restaurant and you get the fry and it's like, it's like you're like, come on, <laughs> yeah. like, really? Yeah. Once our fries are perfectly golden, it's time to start on our poutine. You want to try? Yeah, of course. And of course, we got to add a little salt here. Toss it. Ooh, hot. Yeah, yeah. So good. We'll pack this with the fries. Okay. We've got some cheddar cheese curds. This is very uh, authentic other than my poutine gravy. We got the basic, sort of a basic poutine gravy. Mm -hmm. I like to step it up a notch. Oh. All right. So, like that. so we only serve Wagyu beef, which is the breed okay. of Kobe mm -hmm. beef from. And so we've made this amazing oh, demi gloss with the Wagyu bones, red yeah. wine. So this is a little, little higher end than the normal Canadian poutine gravy. So we'll pop this in the oven so it's, it's soft and mm -hmm. velvety delicious. and delicious. Absolutely. Okay, so we're back. Oh, ho, ho. So you can see how the cheap <laughs> curds have started to yes. melt. I, what I always like to do is, you know. A little bit more. Canadian taught me this once. More <laughs> gravy, eh? More so gravy, I was like, all right, eh? more gravy. Let's eh? do it, eh? So you a little green. That's gorgeous. And we've got our cheese curds. Is it going to be yeah, too hot to eat? Or? Yeah, here we go. There's a nice one right there. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Holy cow, that gravy is amazing. Really creamy cheese curd. And you still have french fries. fries. Yeah. So what else are we going to make? You know, yeah, I'm so we've got the poutine. Continue eating. Yeah, right. He's going to do all the work. <laughs> Love it. It's like my <laughs> wife. We're going to do a, uh, a barbecue pulled pork fry. So That's something I never would have thought of, but yeah, that right? sounds delicious. We add some cheddar cheese to our fries and put them in our dish. So this is actually a whole pig. We did a pig roast, so we saved this stuff. Yeah, so you could, if you had like a leftovers from dinner the night before or something. Exactly. This Save every bit. great to do. We add a little bit more cheese on more top. Cheese? And then this goes in the oven. Awesome. Boop. These are the loaded, loaded fries. Loaded fries. So we've got a little home. pork. So we have... A little homemade barbecue sauce. You gotta have that. A little bit of green onion. You know, let me get a fork. 
You know, here at the Spokane Club, we are civilized. Yeah, we're outside. civilized. I was just gonna dig I right know, in. I know, dig right in. I'm not very civilized. It, it, mm. Vinegary barbecue mm -hmm. sauce, a really succulent pork. So we have two great, easy dishes to do with some frozen french fries. When you're using fries like this, you can kind of get creative, can't you? You don't have to do something super fancy. Absolutely. Uh, so I had a food truck in Chicago, and I served burgers and mm -hmm. sandwiches, meat. And I would have vegans and vegetarians come and say, hey, you guys have anything for me? And I'm like, yes, fries. And I'd like fries. literally go through my, my sandwich prep corner and go, okay, yeah. I've got avocados, all these different vegetables mm -hmm. and really fresh things, and have this big basket of fries with all these good toppings on nice, top. Nice, yeah. because it can be a base for exactly. a lot of different stuff. To get the recipe for Chef Aaron's beef bone gravy and the poutine, head to wagrown.com. There are bushels of buzz these days about eating whole foods. Potatoes are a whole food that you can bake, steam, fry, grill, mash, or whip. Potatoes were first cultivated about 5,000 years ago, and French fries were introduced to America by Thomas Jefferson at a White House dinner. Their colors range from golden yellow to deep purple, reflecting different types of flavonoids that are beneficial for immune function. Potatoes come in different shapes and sizes from fingerlings to the size of your fist. The beauty of a potato lies in its versatility. They can be sided up to a freshly grilled salmon, a filet mignon steak, or made into a lentil burger. Washington's rich soil and fertile growing conditions provide an excellent climate for potatoes to thrive and absorb minerals like potassium, iron, selenium, and manganese along with vitamin C and vitamin B6. When it comes to calories, an average russet potato contains about 110 calories, which means it's more about what you put on the potato. Besides being nutrient-packed, potatoes are a cost-efficient, complex carbohydrate that when stored in a cool and dry place can keep for several weeks. Whether you're eating french fries at the White House or enjoying your potatoes sliced, diced, whole, or hashed, they're a great choice for nutrient-packed, whole foods flavor. Our next stop is in Richland at the Lamb Weston Innovation Center. Lamb Weston is one of the world's largest suppliers of frozen potato products, developing some of our most popular potato dishes. First, I met up with Vice President of Research and Development, Chris Reynolds, to get a quick tour and find out more about what happens at this innovation center. This is quite the building. Yes, um, it's, it's designed to be visually exciting to our consumers uh -huh. and inspiring. Possibilities the possibilities in potatoes. and be inventive. Yeah. yeah, that's what we talk about. So. Okay, so you want to give me a little tour? Sure, I'd be glad to. Really fun. The first room Chris takes me to is their explore room. Well, I like this. So take a walk in our potato dreamland. What? Yes. What do you want people to come away with? Yeah. So yeah. what we're referring to there is being inventive. But what we want them to do is dream. What are their dreams about a product? something new, something quite different from anyone else's. We want them to dream. Let us help explore the possibilities. And, and so that's why we say uh, taking a walk in our dreamland. Like it. It's uh, dreaming about new products and helping those dreams to come true. So tell me a little bit about the history of Lamb Weston and, and like the history of all this innovation. So Lamb Weston was actually formed as a company in 1950, so uh -huh. we're going on 66 years. And part of the idea all around that Lamb Weston has always been very inventive. Mm -hmm. Lamb Weston invented the first what they call potato gun, okay. which was a cutting system where water moves potatoes through a stationary knife. Okay. That was the lamb gun. Um, since then, we have had many other innovations that you can see. Yeah. We have some so um, steam 3D, instead of peel. Right, we peel all our potatoes using steam, so okay. there's no there's no chemicals. Some of the other innovations that we've had, um, the twister fry. Yeah. We actually um, invented the cutting system to generate a twister fry. Okay, I'm starting to think already. I'm gonna come up with something. You're gonna come up with something. <laughs> all right. Well, we love new ideas, so <laughs> you'll have to tell me as soon as you know. Next, Chris takes me to my new favorite place, the Possibilities Kitchen. There, I meet their executive chef, Glenda Murray, who invites me to help cook up some of her popular dragon tail fries. So we're gonna make some magic, right? Yes. And is that what happens are. here in this kitchen? You explain kind of what you do. 
Okay, what happens is we'll, um, the research and development will come up with new fries, new cuts. Mm -hmm. They'll bring me the fries, I'll come up with ideas. And what I'm looking for with the fries is to see if they're going to stand up to toppings, mm -hmm. whatever the consumer's going to use them for, whatever restaurateurs are going to use them for. We start by mixing twisty fries with some cooked chicken, onions, and green pepper. And I asked Glenda how many potatoes she typically eats in a day. As many <laughs> as I want. <laughs> I love it. You're in like a dream, potato dream I, world I am, here, aren't I you? Am. Once it's all mixed up, we pour the fry mixture in our dish and top it with sriracha cheese, cilantro, onions, red peppers, and finish it with some sriracha sauce. Moment of truth. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Yeah. Salty, crunchy, spicy, everything all in one plate. Perfect. Yeah. Now that we had our main course, it's time for dessert. There's potatoes in here? There are potatoes in there. Um, I like to take potatoes just one step further than people uh -huh. think about. So what I have inside these bonbons is a red mashed potato. So can we try one? We can absolutely okay. try one. Oh my gosh. Nice and creamy. If you hadn't told me that there was potato in here, I would never guess that. Those were fantastic. Thank you. I'm here with Leif Benson, and we are in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane. And Leif is a international culinary ambassador. Perfect. Which sounds like the best job in the entire world. <laughs> it's hard to complain about eating food all over the world. I love it. And so we're going to do some fun stuff with Washington potatoes today, yes. right? We're going to do a Black Forest ham and Washington potato hash brown waffle. So it's going to be that savory, okay. sweet thing. And so this is super convenient. You know, these frozen potatoes are actually a really great product. Mm -hmm. I mean, they come right out of the field, super fresh. Uh, they're they're cooked and then frozen and ready to use, and they're inexpensive. They're, doesn't they're, get much. They're, and they're yummy. Yeah, it doesn't get much fresher than that. I start dicing a red pepper while Chef Leif cuts up an onion. Yo, so. Tell me a little bit about what an international culinary ambassador does and, and, and some of your accolades. I mean, you have been a chef for a long time and yep. uh, you have quite a few awards to your name. You know, it's, it's exciting, it's ever-changing, it's trendy, it's fickle, it's, it's aggravating, it's, it's, it's all of the above. But, yeah. but uh, you know, I had an opportunity, uh, oh, uh, you know, some, some time ago to compete internationally in the uh, World Culinary Olympics. Uh, a lot of people don't know about the Culinary Olympics. No. But, uh, they've been around for a hundred years uh, competing globally in Frankfurt, Germany. Wow. So we took a team in uh, 1988 and then 1992 and competed with the Northwest Food, uh, and we won 16 medals. You know, represented the Northwest very well in, in our great food that we have. I always call it the bounty of the Northwest, because uh -huh. uh, we have such a bounty of everything here in the Northwest. Um, uh, so it's a great place to be a chef. Okay, so I've got my chopped red Yeah, and then, so let's do a little bit of Black Forest ham. Okay. Let's say just take a couple of nice uh, slices, say slices. maybe quarter inch slices, okay. kernel garnishes, makes up the waffles. So you have the potato as the main part of it, and uh -huh. that is the bulk of it is potato and hash brown in this case. Internal but then garnishes. the internal garnishes add that exciting yes. flavor and texture and color. So as far as frozen potatoes go, you can really do a lot of things with frozen potatoes. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to global flavors, uh, I'm, I'm always a big proponent of, you know, curries, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, all the uh, South American flavors. One thing I have found traveling around the world so much is that Everybody loves potatoes. Yeah. I mean, there is really no cuisine on the planet that people don't consume and enjoy potatoes. So true. In India, they're very uh, uh, vegetarian based food. You know, lots a lot of potatoes, of potatoes being potatoes. used. That's so, right. really, such a good blank canvas for pretty much everything you can possibly think of. Okay, we've got yeah. our internal garnishes. And then I think all we need going. to do now is grate a little bit of the cheddar cheese. Okay. So we're taking these uh, beautiful uh, frozen uh, potatoes. Now, I have thawed these out because okay. uh, now you can mix them frozen, but I found they mix a little bit better in a thawed state. Mm -hmm. uh, normally with uh, a frozen product, you almost always maintain them in a frozen state uh, until you cook them. Uh, in this case, we're thawing them for ease of mixing. Leif adds some flour to the potatoes as a binder and baking soda to help it all rise. We follow that up with the onions, red pepper, ham, cheese, and a whipped egg. 
If you can just mix that up, you want to mix it fairly thoroughly. This is kind of fun too, because I've never cooked anything but waffles in my, like a sweet kind of uh, thing in my waffle iron, so this is kind of fun. Well, and this is going to be waffle-like texture, so it'll mm -hmm. have that kind of cakey sort of quality like a waffle. But the other hand too is that doing hash brown potatoes without anything in there in the waffle iron instead mm -hmm. of in a pan works fantastic, because you get those all those crispy edges and things yeah, that's that my kind of golden. Part. Yeah, you know. So part. even just taking the hash brown the potatoes hash brown straight. By with a little salt and pepper into the waffle iron on its own is fantastic. Right. And with this, you could get creative too. I mean, whatever you think something that you would like in there. You could. Absolutely. We add in some salt and pepper and put some of our mixture in our waffle iron. You know, the more you put in there, you're going to compress it into a more of a dense sort of cake. Mm -hmm. If you want it to be a little lighter, just put a little less in. You just close it up, and this one is the flip, so we're going to flip that over. Yeah. Once it's browned and ready, it's time to dish up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, awesome. Look at that. So, so you see it's a combination of being a hash brown and a waffle at the right. same time. But yet, we still are going to serve uh, maple syrup on it. Often I will actually uh, do a, a poached egg on here or, mm -hmm. or a fried egg or something like that. And again, it's just kind of a very satisfying sort of thing. Yeah. Think about a waffle, it's kind of a cake. Sure. Now all of a sudden you're introducing now. a vegetable and a lot okay. of vegetables into your you diet here. hide some stuff so, in there and your kids won't even know. This is the healthy version <laughs> of a waffle, so. So sweet and savory. Sweet and savory at the same time. Oh, I love it. Mmm. Get that little crunch on crispy. there. Mm -hmm. Crispy. I get the sweet at first. Mm -hmm. And now I'm tasting the peppers mm -hmm. and the ham. I love it. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Well, fun. To get the recipe for Chef Leif's hash brown waffles, head to wagrown.com. Washington's potato farmers know in order to get the best product, you need the right and most up-to-date equipment possible. That's it for this edition of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.